Continue our devotion with our call to worship litany. Let us recite it together at this time as I direct your attention to the monitors. Why are we here? We are here to serve. Who will we serve? Our God, our Christ, our fellow man. What will we do to serve them? When hungry, we will feed them. When thirsty, we'll give them water to drink. When a stranger, we'll welcome them in. When naked, we will clothe them. When sick, we will visit them. When in prison, we will go to them. When will we serve them? From now until Christ returns. Where will we serve them? In the sanctuary, in our homes, and in our communities. And how will we be led? Zion Baptist Church is led by the Spirit of God to be a soul-seeking, loving, caring, and warm church whose ministry nurtures people of all ages through Bible teaching, inspired preaching, and life-giving direction for the building of the kingdom of God. And because we are a Bible-believing church, standing on the word of God, let us now at this time take our Bibles in hand and recite our Bible litany. This, this is, is my Bible, Bible. It's it's in all, complete in all aspects. aspects. It, it is in heaven, free, free from, from all error. It is infallible, incapable of failing. It is incapable of error and expanding doctrine on faith and laws. I believe it to be the living word of God. I believe it reveals the treasures of truth, life, death, and happiness. I believe it reveals the person of Jesus Christ and his teachings. With the help of the Holy Spirit, I will live in accordance with his teachings. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious God, our Father, O oh Lord, how great thou art. 
Heavenly Father, we just come right now first saying thank you thank for you, this Lord. another day. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us, O oh Lord, to be here once more in this yes, house of Lord. worship. And Lord, we thank you, O oh Heavenly Father. Lord, you brought us through yet another week. Yes, Lord. We had some ups, we had some downs. Oh, yes. But through it all, we found we can depend on you. Yes, Lord. You always seem to show up right on time. Yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, now as we worship, oh Lord, let us worship you in spirit and in truth, doing all things to lift up the name of Jesus. For you have said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Heavenly Father, we're glad to be in your service. And if you should come while we yet worship, we just pray, oh Heavenly Father, we'll be counted worthy to enter into your kingdom, where we can join with the heavenly host, proclaiming glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and evermore shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.
First-time visitors to please stand. First-time visitors. Well. <laughs> well, I welcome all of you to church, and I hope that y'all have a blessed day today. And Zion, let's show each other how much we appreciate them for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Zion! 
children can now go to children's church. Children can now go to children's church. Let's prepare for our tithes and offerings by standing for our tithes litany. You'll see two deacons, deacon holders holding a bag on this side for Reverend Gerald M. Joyner. Let's give him a love gift. Deacon Ross will hold the bag on this side for the offering for Reverend Gerald M. Joyner. So again, the two deacons are holding the bags for love gifts for Reverend Gerald M. Joyner. Are we ready? Zion, it's time to give. Zion, it's tithing and giving time. To whom does the tithe belong? The tithe belongs to the Lord. All the tithes of the land are the seed of the land, are the fruit of the tree is the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Who should tithe? Why should we tithe? Should we tithe out of our gross or out of our net? How much should we tithe? What is God's promise for the tither? What kind of giver does the Lord love? What scripture governs our giving? Turn in the normal directions and follow the ushers to bring your tithes and offerings. Love you.
things come of thee.
solid ground. It won't stop the storm, but it'll help you get through it. Amen? And right now, in this local congregation, it's prayer time. It's prayer time. Now, I can tell you, but you know what to do. I know you know what to do. It's altar call time. So would you stand with me and come down to the altar and fix your minds and your heart on prayer. Bring your concerns to a God who hears prayers and answers prayers. And Lord God, we need you. Lord God, we need you right now. Oh, we need you, Lord. If you have a, a prayer concern, or someone's crossing your heart right now, just say it out low. Just say it out low. East End and Smoketown needs your prayers. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. These young people. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let us go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, lover of our souls, lift up our countenance. Lord God, we come now, Lord, first raising your name on high, Lord God. Glorifying you, Lord, with all the things that are possible in us to glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another expression of your tender love and your mercy toward each and every one of us this morning. Lord God, we bless your name. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, first we ask you, Lord God, to forgive us of our sins, Lord God, so we can have a right standing in your sight covered in the blood of Jesus. Lord, we petition your throne, Lord. We come right now, Lord, with so many, many concerns. And Lord God, you know each and every one of them, Lord God. Lord God, we've come to another week, Lord God, with some of our weeks, uh, some of our travels haven't been good, Lord God. But what we can say is thank you because you sustained us. You brought us from one Sunday to another Sunday, Lord God. And we bless your holy name. Lord God, we want to pray for this city, Lord God. Lord God, all the things that are happening, Lord God, only you can fix it. Lord God, we pray for each and every member here, Lord God, and the concerns that they may have, whether it's with their health, with their spirituality, with their finances, with their children, Lord God. If, if it's that, Lord God, touch in a special, special way, Lord God, because we know that you are God who specializes in whatever our concern may be. Lord God, we ask you as we stand before you, Lord God, for you to stand with us. To be with us, Lord, in a, in a dying world, Lord God, that you are our, our hope, Lord God, when it comes to every consequence of life that we could have. And Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to bless this church, that this ministry may leave from this walls and go out into the community, Lord, and to tell somebody about a God that can save anybody. 
Lord God, we pray for every ministry in this church, Lord. We ask you to fortify, Lord, and give it the life that you want it to have, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for every member, Lord God, to, to, to give us strength to go on just a little while longer, Lord God. Because sometimes, Lord God, we are tired and we are burdened down. But we know that you are a lifter, Lord God. We know you to be a wheel in the middle of a wheel, Lord God. We know you to be that bright, shining star, Lord God. But we need you right now. We need you, Lord God. We need you in this worship service. Lord God, we ask you to tend to this worship service, Lord God. We ask you to anoint the speaker of the hour, Lord God, to give him preaching power, Lord God, that will amaze him, Lord God, that will uplift this congregation, Lord God, that he be able to preach the uncompromising gospel. And that your name be glorified and the people be edified. Lord God, we pray for the pastor of this flock. Lord God, you know all about him. Lord God, you know all his needs. So in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we ask you to dispatch your loving angels to his every need, Lord God, and keep him strong. Keep him fortified Lord so that he may be able to lead the way you want him to and Lord God we pray for his his son Lord God Lord God you know all about that fellow and Lord God in the name of Jesus we lift him up to you Lord God Lord God you know his needs only you can fulfill them so in the name of Jesus Lord we submit him to you Lord God as we go about this worship service Lord God let us be mindful of what we're doing and who we're doing it for, Lord God. And know, Lord God, that you got everything in control. So, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for every little thing that you do for us, Lord God. Every little thing that you did for us, Lord God. And everything that you will do. And it's in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ that we ask every one of these blessings. And let every heart say amen. 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 Thank God. I know amen. what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. I found the answer. Yes, I'm telling Stormy sea, out on the stormy sea, out on the stormy sea, raging sea, out on the stormy sea. I've been sick, I've been sick, I've been filled, I've been filled with memory. Long came Jesus, long came Jesus, you rescued me. Sometimes we get an opportunity to fix what we messed up. And we praise the Lord for them opportunities. And we're going to sing a little song about it. I'm going to clean up what I messed up. Starting my life over again. 
I want to clean up what I messed up. Starting my life over again. Come on, y'all help me sing. Clean up what I messed up. Starting my life over again. Gotta clean up what I messed up. Starting my life over again. Check this out. I made up my mind. I ain't lying no more. Seek I also lie up, can't make it through the dark. Clean up what I mess up. Story my life over again. Come on, sweep it up now. I gotta I clean up, clean it on up. What I mess up. Story my life over again. Now check this out. I made up my mind. I ain't running yeah. no more. Going right through the door. Gonna break it through the door. Clean up. But I messed up. Started my life over again. I gotta clean up. But I messed up. Started my life over again. I made up my mind. I ain't cheating no more. You see, a cheater can't make up. it through the door. Gotta clean up. All right. What I mess up. up. Sound good to me. Started my life over again. Gotta clean up. What I messed up, started my life over again. Check this out. Those of you that feel like I do, let's do better. Oh, so better, yeah, yeah. Those of you that feel like I do, let's do better. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those of you that feel like I do, let's do better. Hey, hey, hey. Those of you that feel like I do, let's do better. We can do so much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta clean up what I messed up. Started my life over again. Gotta clean up what I messed up. Started my life over again. Clean up what I messed up. Started my life over again. Gotta clean up. Well, I messed up, started my life over again, got to clean up, well, I messed up, started my life over again, got to clean up, well, I messed up, started my life over again. something in your kitchen and then you think you got everything straight and you drop the pepper all on the floor. You drop some sugar all on the floor and things have to be straightened up again. But that's what God does for our lives. He cleans us up. He straightens us up. 
so we can start this thing called life all over again. Hey man, give a hand clap of praise for that. To the angel of this house, to my brothers in the ministry, to my brothers and sisters of Zion Baptist Church, I send you greetings from Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Although our pastor is away, there is a word from the Lord today. Amen. And it can be found in the Old Testament record of the book of Numbers, chapter 13, verses 30 through 33. The book of Numbers, chapter 13, verses 30 through 33. And the word of God reads as follows. Caleb interrupted, called for silence before Moses and said, let's go up and take the land. Now we can do it. But the others said, we can't attack those people. They're way stronger than we are. They spread scary rumors among the people of Israel. They said, we scouted out the land from one end to the other. It's a land that swallows people whole. Everyone we saw was huge. We even saw the Nephilim giants. The Anak giants come from Nephilim. Alongside them, we felt like grasshoppers. And they looked down on us as if we were grasshoppers. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, it's a, it's a quarter till, so we done cruise through service. Y'all not going to blame me for this moving through, through service, so no jokes to pastor on my behalf. This is not my fault. I don't have anything to do with this. I want to talk to you for a few minutes this morning on the subject of who told you you couldn't do it? Who told you you couldn't do it? You know, brothers and sisters, belief is a funny thing, right? Because how we believe or feel dictates what we do. It has been said that the person who says it can't be done should not get in the way of the person doing it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Put another way, think you can or think you can't. Either way, you are correct. Belief and what we believe is paramount to how we behave, how we treat other people, and whether or not we stand on the promises of God. Amen? The enemy's job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And one of the fundamental attacks that we get isn't physical, it's spiritual and mental. Because the moment your mind is attacked and the moment doubt enters your mind, that changes everything about how we behave. Dr. Carter G. Woodson and his seminal classic entitled The Miseducation of the Negro puts it this way. He says, if you can control a man's thinking, 
you do not have to worry about his action. When you determine what a man shall think, you don't have to concern yourself with what he'll do. If you make a man feel that he is inferior, you do not have to compel him to accept an inferior status. For he will seek it himself. If you make a man think that he is justly an outcast, then you don't have to order him to the back door. His very existence will create a back door. Brothers and sisters, to bless, which is a verb which indicates that there has to be some action involved with, with uh, being blessed. By definition means to invoke divine favor upon or to confer well-being or prosperity on. That means that a blessing is the approval that allows or helps you to do something. Oh, uh, y'all, okay, y'all get that. Help and approval, or put another way, a blessing is help and approval from God. We have to think about the African American community for a minute, right? So 1620, we brought here, we survived 245 years of chattel slavery, <coughs> go through another 99 years between Reconstruction and Jim Crow segregation to 1964. Then we grab 52 years from 1964 till today where we are right now, right? So 52 years from civil rights legislation to the day. Anybody in here raise your hand if you were born in 1964, 60-ish? Mm -hmm. You understand that to destroy communities, you have to destroy family. To destroy families, you have to attack the individuals in the household, both men and women. Think, think about that for a moment. We've also endured attacks on educational access. It's not often times that we're not smart enough to go to college. It, it, it's, it's, we can't find the money to go to college. They've changed the rules on the way you could access FAFSA forms and how much grant dollars that are available to you based upon your past. But there are also attacks on employment, right? The jobs we used to do aren't here anymore. And the jobs that aren't here without access to education oftentimes, we're not prepared for. Or the jobs that are available, we oftentimes, the most vulnerable of our community, can't get to those jobs because transportation is a barrier. So there have been attacks on who we are and on what the promise to us is, some of which that seeped over into the way in which we behave. Our, our city over the past several days has been interesting, to say the least. Yes, sir. You watching the news to compare notes with your friend as you get on the telephone and say, girl, it's a shame, or man, you heard what happened in Smoketown or the West End, or Shiloh, yeah. or the South End, yeah. or Oldham County, yeah. or Indiana, yeah. where, wherever you reside, right? But this really isn't any different than what the children of Israel went through when they were walking under the promise of Abraham. Yes. They faced oppression, they faced trials, they faced opportunity and problems all around. Right? Yes, sir. 
They had unjust laws. In Exodus chapter 1, you can see where the decree by Pharaoh was given for every male Jewish child to be murdered by Hebrew midwives. You can go to um, Exodus 2, where we'll get the story of Moses and how Moses' own mother had to hide herself while she was pregnant because she knew she carried a child out of fear that she may be killed by the Egyptian order, yes. right? Amen. She then had her child, which is Moses, right? Pushed her child off to be taken care of in Pharaoh's household only to be ordered to protect her own child. Yes. Yes. See, God will keep you when things don't look well. But they also had tax, a tax on their employment. Hebrews, um, excuse me, Exodus chapter 5, verse 6 and 9 talks about the edict where they were told to make bricks without straw. Okay, so, you know, we, you know, I have a trouble with that. I ain't no bricklayer. I don't understand that process. So, fry you some chicken without flour. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. My main point, brothers and sisters, is this. God promises, promises to us are true. However, to fulfill the promise, the believer must come prepared to give more of him or herself both spiritually and physically to take hold of the promised blessing. Amen. To support this main point, I got three quick points. First, you must trust in God's promise. Amen. Second, you must go against the thoughts of others. Yes. And finally, a physical and a spiritual giant must be defeated. You must trust in God's promise. Yes. You must go against the thoughts of others. And a spiritual and physical giant must be defeated. God removed the Israelites from the horrors of slavery in Egypt. However, the people longed for the security and the certainty of the past instead of the uncertainty of the wilderness. In Numbers chapter 11, they complained about the manna that was coming from heaven. They were tired of the provisions that were provided to them by God. <laughs> they said, at least in Egypt, we had fish and cucumbers and melons and garlic. They reminisced on what they left as if it was better than where they were. Oh, uh, y'all, y'all know what. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh, y'all looking at me like y'all ain't never reminisced. Y'all ain't never sat in a beauty salon or barbershop and talked about how it was. As if it was better than it is. Uh, I'm, I'm the only. Yeah, oh, see. Come on now. <laughs> Does this sound familiar to you? Yeah. While you're on the road to a blessing, you're going to face rough terrain. Yeah. You're going to have some valleys. You're going to have to walk through some mountains oh, yeah. that you're going to have to climb. Robert Frost, in the last stanza of the poem, The Road Not Taken, puts it this way. He says, I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere the ages and ages home. Two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less travel. And that has made all the difference. The poem is about someone making a challenging decision hoping that it is the right decision for his life. Hoping, brothers and sisters, that as you follow God, you're going in the right direction. Anybody ever 
thought about that? Anybody ever sat in the midnight hour there on house and talk about God? I don't know what you're doing, but what you're doing. I don't know why I've had to face this, but God. I don't know why our communities hate like we hate. I don't know why understanding the faith tradition in our community is so strong, but people are leaving the church like somebody yelled fire. But God, God, in the direction of your blessing, and the road looks more difficult, you ought to continue on in this condition of life. Where you were before the leap of faith was made, we forget about the faith advances that we made that allowed us to take the leap of faith that we took. So in other words, we forget about what God has done for us that allows us to get strong enough to take what? The next Leave. That's right. right, we just don't we just don't come to Christ with it all together. Truth be told, some of us been in here years and ain't got it. We forget the struggles and how God has provided for us again and again and again. Look at the people of Israel who, during their current struggle, had lost track about Abraham. See, the people were complaining about the manna. They were being supplied manna and didn't have to ask for nothing. All they had to do was go and collect it at an appropriate time. And they were told not to get too much. They forgot that they were living on the promise that was given to Abraham that said, I will go and make you into a great nation. See, we are oral people. Oral tradition happens in the African-American community much more so than reading. So I think we've forgotten what it's like to sit at the feet of somebody who is older than we are so they can yeah. tell us about the struggle. Yeah. But they'd also, not only did they forget about Abraham, they forgot about Jacob. They forgot about how Jacob wrestled with the Lord for his blessing. And uh, as a benefactor of his wrestling with the Lord, he walked with a limp. They forgot about Joseph, <laughs> whose brothers yes. sold him into slavery yes. because they were jealous of him. Yes. He's a little bit arrogant, too. Yes. But who turned around yes. Egypt, right? Yes. Which is what led them into captivity because what had happened was the Pharaohs had forgotten all about what Joseph had done. They moved on up and moved out, found out Joseph was in Egypt, found out things was good under his rule, and what did everybody do? Man, they started going to, go up to Egypt. Oh, Y'all don't understand. Okay, so see here. So see, when in 65, when civil rights legislation w was, was made, and everything was kind of lifted, so our, our mentality was lifted, so we could find out we could get loans in other zip codes. <laughs> And the moment we could get loans in other zip codes, what do we do? Whoop, oh, whoop, oh, here come the truck. We moving on up. <laughs> and we left like gangbusters. And we left those who, who couldn't. Mm, you, you think about that on your way home. We left. What was our foundation? But we left because God had put something in our spirit Amen. to leave. Amen. Right? Amen. We left because we trusted God. We trusted the fight that we had been in. Right? So our community, just like the people of Israel, are steeped in a deep faith relationship with what the Word of God has to say for our lives. That's the only way we go from chattel slavery 
through segregation to the day is because we trusted in God. But you also got to be willing to go against the thoughts of others. Amen. See, blessings from God come in the form sometimes of dreams, visions, and goals. And they're given to individuals, not groups. The person with the dream is often thought to be crazy when that dream is shared with yeah. other people. Amen. They typically respond by stating, that can't happen. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you can't, I don't know who, who you think you are, you can't do that. Why don't you just do what the rest of us are doing? Not what God has placed in your spirit to do. And that's one of the reasons why people are so angry and so unhappy, because God has placed something in your belly that you won't do nothing with. And it's so uncomfortable, and you have so much discomfort about what God has told you to do, and you don't have the courage to get up and do, it fosters out in anger and discontent. See, in 1885, an African-American woman named Sarah Good patented the hideaway bed. Think about that for a minute. And why a patent is so important, because see, patents give you right to a concept or an idea. So that means that anybody that comes along that wants to alter your, your idea or concept has to pay you for it. 1885. A self-taught inventor working for a law firm specializing in patents created the carbon filament, making light bulbs cheaper to manufacture and last longer. Lewis Latimer. I, 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 I want you to understand who we are. And who we are is not what somebody says we are. Sarah Breedlove attempting to stop extreme hair loss suffered by black women during slavery, received a vision for a product, a hair pomade, to help regrow and settle hair. That product sold, making Miss Breelove a multi-millionaire. Oh, Y'all may know her better as Madam C.J. Walker. Think about when C.J. Walker lived, became a multi-millionaire through shadow slavery. See, Caleb believed what his other brothers and sisters didn't believe, mm -hmm. that the land yes. could be taken despite what somebody said yes. about it. He believed in the promise that God gave ultimately to Abraham that he was living in the experience of today. Yeah. Well, that's important. Because, see, the world right now acts like God isn't alive. Amen. The world right now acts like hate, anger, bitterness, discord, jealousy are the number one items to possess. And it's been programmed in us for decades. We watch shows like Lifetime for the Rich and Famous. And if we didn't live that way, we weren't thought to what have any value. That's not what the word said. The word said what? What, what are the promises of God? That you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image and in the likeness of I can do all things through what? The promises of God. And we act like we don't know them. So Caleb believed in the promises of God. But, but much more than not only did Caleb believe in the promises of God, Caleb was prepared to face a spiritual and a physical giant. See, Canaan, the promised land, was habited by the Nephilim. And the Nephilim were people of gigantic stature with superhuman strength. Okay. The book of Genesis refers to them as the offspring 
of humans and sons of God, angels. Y'all don't get quiet, angels. Just go to Job. In the first chapter, when God called all the sons of God to, to, together and all the angels came, what, who was with them? Satan. Satan. And what did he say? Where have you been? What was Satan's answer? I've been to and fro, seeking who I can what? The enemy's job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. In Hebrew, the word Nephilim meant violent or causing to fall. So to enter the promised land, the people of Israel would have to face and conquer a people they perceived who were greater than they were. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You ever had a dream that was bigger than you? Okay, you don't have to have no dream that's bigger than you. What about a reality that's bigger than you? Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying. Okay, so we live in um, primarily um, those of us live in 402 11, 402 12, 402 10. Actually, the church actually sits in 402 10 on the verge of 40203 zip code. And what's unique about these zip codes? West End. Typically what the city will call lower income, poverty. The streets often look what? Dirty. There is a mindset when you start coming west of 9th Street. Right? It looks a particular way. And then crime all over the place, right? Drug trade ain't nothing new. I mean, they used to run numbers, but now it's the lottery. People used to loan shark, but now it's payday loans. It's all what? Around us and how we feel about a community from outside trying to tell us who we are based upon what our environment is. Not who God has told us we are. Not what we've actually come and walked through. 245 years, we are the ancestors of those individuals who struggled and fought, who laid in the bottom of boats on, under semen and feces. And we stand here the collective ancestors of those people. Fighters! Yeah. But we won't fight. Amen. People of faith! Well, yeah. But we don't believe. Yeah. We close our blinds. Yeah. Somebody else will deal with that. Yeah. It, um, Miss So-and-so, We'll pick that trash up in her yard. I don't need to. I don't need to touch it. I know that's little JoJo from around the corner acting crazy. I'm not going to say nothing to little JoJo. They perceived that their environment was greater than they were. They couldn't deal with feeling inferior. They felt those people were both bigger, stronger, and better than they were based upon the situation they didn't come in. I'm, I, let me tell you, I have been, uh, God has blessed me. You know, when you go, my mother did me, a, I love you mama, but I'm, you did me a disservice. So when I was in high school, <laughs> when I was in high school, she sat me down and you know, everybody else was out playing football and I wanted to be out playing football. She sat me down at the dining room table at a formal play setting and instructed me on how to use a formal place setting. Okay. And I don't even think what you're doing this for. <laughs> I had no idea 
Then one day I'd work in corporate America and I would go sit down and have dinner with people who are evaluating you based upon how you behave. I'd also have no idea that I would get to that formal place setting and watch them not know what to do. <laughs> they were in Egypt for 430 years. God freed them from the bondage so they could live the promise that he'd given to Abraham. Yes. Right, that, that's so important, and that, that's the promise that they were living on. So, you know, 52 years after the civil rights legislation, and we quit fight. We thought we had inclusion. It was going to be legal. It's on the books, and we ain't got to fight no more. You know what? I ain't got to live next to sister so-and-so because I ain't like this sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so, no way, so I'm gonna go out to where brother and sister so-and-so, I ain't gotta see them. I ain't gotta deal with them. And if I don't have to see it, it don't exist. And this giant, this spiritual and physical giant is still pummeling us today because we don't use the power that we, Things had gotten so bad after 64 that Marvin Gaye in 71 asked, what's going on? <laughs> Wait a minute, we were so together and loved one another and sang kumbaya and ate s'mores, went to the local bars and drank beer and liked one another. Oh, uh, y'all, I own me on the beer part like y'all ain't out drinking beer. <laughs> I ain't got no hell to keep me out of and no heaven, I mean, no hell to put me in and no heaven to keep me out of, so I know better. We figure out what's going on. And things got so bad that 26, later, 26 years later, instead of us asking what's going on in our community, I'm in college banging, who shot you? Y'all don't get it. Y'all don't, don't know what I'm talking about. See, the notorious big was the poet laureate of my college years. And in 1995, he had a song called, Who Shot You? And when the beat, y'all don't understand. Y'all understand. I ain't gonna act like I've always been saved. Y'all can do what y'all wanna do. God has blessed us with talents and gifts to help us survive and to prosper through situations that nobody understands how we made it through. But we've become accustomed to selling ourselves short. To feeling like this is too big for me. So much so because our thinking is messed up. We kill each other, literally and figuratively. And they both are bad. You know, so and, and I need, need to understand that, that your faith and your belief or your walk with God, you have a, you know, when we were young, we used to do bad stuff like put, put water in sandwich bags and then throw them at people. <laughs> And, and, you know, I was getting slick. I had gotten two sandwich bags and put two more in my pocket. Yeah, nanny, I put them in my pocket. <laughs> and one of them got a little hole in it. <laughs> so, you know, my pocket was all, all this was wet. But you, you, but you understand what I'm saying? See, a little thing, like a, like a little puncture, cause that bag to leak water all on, in my lap, in my lap area. <laughs> so a little sin. See, I'm, my guy's messing with me because, see, I can't even call and lie in the work no more. You know, it used to be easy, just, you know, I need one of the mental health days, I ain't feeling good, but I get convicted when I try to go for that mental health day now. 
The white lies. Oh, these ain't going to hurt nobody. Your children are watching you. So when something happened and you ask them, well, where did you learn how to lie? Look yourself in the mirror. It's no mistake that we've gotten to where we are because it is us. The generation, we looked at the generation before us, and the generation behind me is looking at us. So they do what they see. So if you sending your child to church and they coming to church, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and, and trying to figure out, and you ain't praying at night, but you want them to pray. You ain't reading the Bible how you expect them to read the Bible. Most of our problems are not someone else's. It's typically the perceptions of our own personal thoughts. It's our thoughts that cause us the most problems. We have this sense of entitlement. We have been programmed that we should not have to struggle or work for anything. It ought to just be given to us just like the manna, and when it's given to us, we're going to complain about it. We don't want to plow the proverbial fields in our lives. We don't want change. People say, I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to be true. You're right, because you don't want to deal with yourself. You don't want to deal with you. You know you selfish. You don't want to deal with it. But yet, still, we'll sit in church all about, I want to be like Christ. No, you don't. <laughs> Because you don't want to give. You want to take. See, when God gave us the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22, 24, the first fruit listed was love. Love, peace, gentleness, meekness, kindness, patience. <laughs> the proverbial self-control. And love and hate can't exist in the same place. Amen. And, we, and we say creative stuff like, I don't like you, but I love you. Right, right. Come on now. <laughs> well, God didn't tell me I had to like you. Right. He told me I had to love you. Amen. <laughs> you try loving something you don't like. You try giving yourself to someone that you don't like. Try it. Just, just, just give it a little effort. You're going to be tired yes, sir. and confused. All right. yeah. In 1 John 3 and 14, we find these words. We know that we have passed from yeah. death to life because we have love for each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Amen. How many times do we turn on the TV, walk outside our doors to listen to gunshots, to understand that there is no love in this world? But the church, the, 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 the church, and I'm not talking about the building. Because as born again, blood washed, baptized believers, you are the church. Amen. The church. They say, well, you know what? And then, you know, it's kind of funny because our disposition changed when we walk up the steps or pull up out front. We get real friendly. We've been, ra <laughs> we've been raising Cain all on the highway to get to church. Get out the way. I'm running late. I'm rushing. You may, you taking too long. Well, every Sunday, you know what time church starts. How are you late every Sunday? <laughs> and then we look at the kids and say, I don't know what 
done happen to you. We happen to them. The church, us. We are supposed to sit on the corner and transform it. But how are we going to transform the community and we can't transform our own lives? Who are we believing in? Who's told you that you couldn't do it? I don't want to be a Christian. It's too hard. Yeah, it's hard. You work hard for that money, though. And if you work your salt, you ain't going to miss a day at work because that mortgage is coming due. That car note coming due. You got a lifestyle you like to keep up. I'm looking at some people that look real, real good. God has promised us that he's going to love us no matter what we do, what we say, or what we believe. God has said, I love you, mankind. I love you so much, and you don't even got to understand me. And see, that's, that's real, right? Because we typically can't love something we don't understand. Oh, yeah, I must be the only person with that, that person in work. <laughs> that person in school that you just can't get along with. And then when you're talking about it, the first thing you're going to say is, I just don't understand. But that's not what God said to us. God said, I, I love you, even though you don't understand me. And despite what you do to me, I'm still going to love you. He said that to the people of Israel over and over and over. Who said, you know what, God, I love you. No, really what we're saying is, God, I love what you do for me. Right. See, that's why our relationships are bad, because we don't love people. We love what people do for us. We love the way people make us feel. That's why selfish people have such a hard problem, because when the well runs dry, Relationships are sacrifice right. and love. Yes, and all of ours sometimes are messed up because we are messed up, because we have forgotten who we are. Yes, all right. All right. So, so God sent Caleb. Caleb believed. Caleb believed so much that they could capture a land that God promised them they could get, regardless of what was in it, regardless of how tall the people were, how strong they were, how good the vegetation was. He didn't care. God had made a promise to him, and God, he knew that if he just obeyed and was obedient, that God would deliver on that promise. See, that's why Christ is such a great example to us. Because, see, Christ was fully man and fully God at the same time. So let's deal, with Christ, let's deal with Christ the man first because God made a promise to his ministry. God told him, if you go and you do what I've asked you to do, you will be blessed. So let's visit him in the garden. He's take his boys to the garden to pray for a little while because he knows what's going to happen with him. He's going to what? He's going to die, right? So he's so concerned because this is demanded of him that he begins praying and he's going to pray and he's, he's so intense and so upset he starts to sweat drops of blood. Because he knows, how, not only does he know he's going to die, but he knows how he's going to die. Yes. He comes and, 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 and he gives himself. They take it, right? They start to beat him. They beat him. And this wasn't no normal beating. Because they beat him until they got tired. Yes. That's what the word said. You see movies, he laughing, people be bent over like... <sighs> That's how they beat God. So that we would have relate. They beat him. But then not only did they beat him, they put a crown of thorns on his head. Put a cross. And see, in Egyptian, I mean, in Hebrew life, a cross for the people of Israel indicated a curse on your life. So not only were they going to kill him, but they were going to curse his life. How evil and wretched is that? It ain't good enough for me just to beat you. Now I got to kick you and spit on you and urinate you, on you when you dance. 
how bad have African American people been treated in this country? Terrible. Amen. Are we down? No. We get up and go to work every day. Are the conditions what we want them to be? No. But God yes, sir. is still good. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. So Christ, as he goes up on the cross, hung, beaten, abused, talked about, ridiculed, they cast lots. They get, well, you know, in, in, any dice players in here? <laughs> they cast lots. So they gambled for his clothes. Pierced his side as they hung him up. And what did he say? Forgive him. For they know not what they do. He hung on a cross so we would have salvific relationship with God. He is like a fragrant offering to God because we stink. God went to the cross so we would have relationship despite what folks said about him, despite what they did to him, despite what people thought about him, and he faced the giant of death so we would have relationship with God. How, as believers, could we desire to live anywhere else but to have relationship with God, to believe in what he said for us, to us, despite how things look, we know that God is God and God all by himself. He can do anything in our lives but fail. To God be the glory. May his word add life to your life. There could be someone in here right now who doesn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, who does not know the salvific plan for your life. Not that you would live low. Low living ain't nothing about God. Living low and, and uh, in, in, in treacherous and, and, and dangerous situations has nothing to do with God. God said that I came to you would have life and have that life more abundantly. Come now. And if you are desirous of an abundant life, come give your life to Christ and allow today to be the first day of a new tomorrow. Amen. Please stand. with your life. I'm a witness. So much more than what you can think. Yeah. Or Hallelujah. Believe, yes, I thank you, Lord. If even possible. Yes. Because I promise you, if somebody would have told me I'd be preaching, I'd have laughed at them. Amen. <laughs> well, 
a matter of fact, I would have laughed and never came back to the church. Amen. <laughs> but God yes. is real. Hallelujah. He's I thank good. you, Lord. Yes, he is. And who he said that you are is who you are. That's right. Amen. Amen. And let us as the church, not just collectively, but as individually, as we leave here, let us go out and be exactly who God said that we are. That's right. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for the benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Christ Jesus, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now, and forever. Let us sing a threefold, amen. But we leave to...